Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. I guess we could call this a homemade equation if someone else hasn't done it before. If they did, please let me know. Anyways, we have e to the power x to the power x equals 1 and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, before we start solving this problem, let's kind of go for the obvious and I'm going to show you something, okay? e to the power something equals 1. So whenever you get something like a to the power something equals 1, let's say a is a constant and f of x is a function of x, what are you thinking? Aren't you thinking f of x should be 0? Because as we know, a to the power 0 equals 1. And some people just make an exception that they say a should not be equal to 0 because they think 0 to the power 0 does not equal 1. Some people say it's undefined, some people say it's indeterminate. You know, so many ways they call it. And I have a strong feeling that 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. And you can go ahead and check out my video about that here. Anyways, that's a different story. But when we do that, we get something interesting. x to the power x equals 0. So what is the solution to that equation, right? How can x to the power x be equal to 0? So the obvious, you know, solution for this would be x equals 0. But then you kind of run into the issue, does 0 to the power 0 equal 0? And again, some people claim it's 0, some people say it's 1. Again, there's a lot of discussion about it. So we can't be sure that x equals 0 will satisfy this equation. And when we solve this problem, we're going to take a look at uh, x equals 0 one more time. But before that, I want to show you a graph of these two functions. You know, if you're trying to solve an equation, you can all go ahead and look at either side as two equations and then try to find the intersection points, right? At least in the real world. So when we look at the graphs of these two functions in Wolfram Alpha, by the way, I don't know, my Wolfram Alpha suddenly turned into dark mode, which is fine. I like it. And I, I know you guys are used to the dark background and so on and so forth. So you can kind of watch it in the dark too. But anyways, as you can see here, they do not intersect. Why? Because the minimum value for this function, e to the power x to the power x, which you can evaluate by differentiation, by the way, is greater than 1. It's close to 2, right? So they don't intersect, which means there are no real solutions. So it kind of also confirms that 0 cannot be a solution, right? Because if 0 was a solution, then they would intersect at 0, but there's no way they're going to intersect. So 0 to the power 0 does not equal 0. Do, does it really prove that? Well, at least it kind of gives us a perspective, hopefully. Anyways, let's go ahead and try to solve this knowing that we don't have a real solution. All right? So e to the power x to the power x equals 1. And I think we've done similar problems before. Like you have e to the e to the x equals 1. Again, setting this equal to 0 is not going to help at all, right? But that's a different story. You can go ahead and look it up. I believe I made a video about this a while ago. Anyways, so to solve this problem, we're going to do this. Left-hand side is exponential, right? Using Euler's number. We're going to do the same thing to the right-hand side. So we can express 1 as a exponential. I mean, can't we write e to the power 0? Yes, we can, but that's not going to help because then we kind of run into this same scenario. So we have to do something different. We have to do something more complex. Yes, that's it. We need to complexify 1. How do you do that in the complex world? Hopefully, you'll remember that 1 is actually a point on the coordinate plane, which is, we call the argon plane. Just give it a fancy name. And we can express a complex number as a two-dimensional number, like 1 is 1, point, 1 plus 0 i. So it's going to have the coordinates 1, 0, which means it's just going to be on the real axis, positive, so on and so forth. Obviously, right? That's a real number. That makes sense. But there's also an argument, which is kind of like, a, I think it's the 0 radians, or I can add 2 pi to it, or just multiples of 2 pi. 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, so on and so forth, right? So let's go ahead and do it. e to the power x to the power x equals 1. The modulus is 1, so we don't really have to worry about it, because remember, complex numbers can be written in polar form, in this form, r times e to the i theta. r is the modulus, or the absolute value, and theta is the argument. And again, I went over these in my other channel, a plus bi. If you haven't checked those out, please do 
check those videos. Okay, so we're gonna replace one with e to the power two pi n i. It's normally i theta, but I write the theta first because i is usually better if you write it last. Okay? Kind of like this, or a plus b i should be at the end. Some people write a plus i b, that's fine too. Anyways, so this is what we have after doing the natural log on both sides. We get x to the x equals 2 pi n i. Awesome. Maybe not so awesome because we have a weird scenario, right? x to the power x. When x is not real, we know that. So it's kind of like a complex to another complex power. So we have to do complex exponentiation. How do you do complex exponentiation? Well, there is a very basic definition. z to the power w is e to the power w ln z in the complex world, right? And later on, in a pro another problem, we're going to talk about complex exponentiation in great detail. But for now, let's uh, let it suffice, whatever that means. So now, we're going to go ahead and do this, apply to x to the power x. So x to the power x can be written as e to the power x ln x, and that is equal to 2 pi n i. We have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Depending on the value of n, because, by the way, did I forget to say that? n is an integer, so it could be positive or negative, even 0. But if n is 0, don't do it, because you're going to get e to the power something equals 0, which doesn't have a solution, even in the complex world, right? Anyways, that's a different story, so n should not be 0, but n is an integer. So if n is positive, we have a different story, and if n is negative, we have another story. So let's go ahead and kind of fix it, can we? Suppose n is equal to, uh, n is greater than 0. So suppose n is positive, okay, for this for a little while at least. So if n is positive, then 2 pi n i is going to be in the real, on the, I mean on the imaginary axis, but it's going to be right here in the positive section. I mean, that, they're not positive or negative numbers, but hopefully you get the idea, like 2 pi i, if n is 1, for example, right? Cool. That gives us an argument of pi over 2, which we can easily demonstrate. And what is the argument? If n is positive, its modulus is just going to be 2 pi n. So in other words, this number can actually be written as 2 pi n times e to the power i times pi over 2. But again, you can add another component to this to make matters worse, right? Because this is just the principal argument, and you can always add 2 pi k to it. Let's just add it for now. And on the left-hand side, we have e to the power x ln x. How awesome, right? Great. Now we can go ahead and try to simplify things a little bit here because this is really getting out of hand. But let me just tell you, first of all, what would you would do? You would natural log both sides and then you would get something like the ln of 2 pi n. By the way, if n is positive, this is real, so we're good. And then plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. So that's the uh, natural log of a complex number, which is defined as follows. And then from here, we can do something. But again, this is quite complicated. Let's go ahead and simplify a little bit, right? And another note that I wanted to make, if n is negative, you're not going to be dealing with a real ln anymore, so you kind of have to change it. Make sense? So suppose you have something like ln negative 2 pi. How would you do that? First, you have to convert it to polar form, which is going to be a little different because then negative 2 pi is going to be a little different. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and simplify this problem a little bit by replacing n with 1, maybe. And that's going to give us ln 2 pi, and then replacing k with 0, plus i times pi over 2. All right? Could we use something else for k? Yes, definitely, but I'm just going to, I just want to stick to this. All right? Cool. At this point, here's what you're supposed to do. You're going to write the x ln x as ln x multiplied by e to the power ln x because x can be written as e to the ln x, right? And then equals ln 2 pi plus i pi over 2. That's a complex number. And then you can go ahead and use Lambert's w function on this and on this. And this is going to give you ln x equals w ln 2 pi plus i pi over 2. And then you can do x equals e to the ln x, and that'll be e to the power w of ln 2 pi plus i times pi over 2. And 
This almost brings us to the end of the video because I want to make a quick announcement. I also made a post. What are you thinking about a Q&A live stream? Would you be interested? Please let me know in the comment section down below and then I can plan it. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care and bye-bye.